and welcome to the Cariola Raceway. For 31 teams and drivers that tried and failed to make the Cariola Grand Prix, there is still a light at the end of the tunnel for them. And this is it, the consolation race featuring cars that did not qualify for the Cariola Grand Prix, but are all here to make this journey worthwhile. Here is the Cariola Raceway as it is today. Uh, the field will head into the much quicker than you'd expect the west curves, then through the Madigan Curve. Sorolla Park is the sand pit on the outside of the fourth turn. And uh, most of the drama today, we expect to be in the Dwyer S, which is usual. That is a much faster uh, S curve than it appears on the track overlay there. Uh, turns 11, 12, and 13 set up the massive mallet corner leading in the front straight. Now let's meet the starting grid. On the pole is Zachary Fitzwater, who was swapped out of the Cariola Grand Prix for teammate Luciano Savaral and Rip Tyler in car 18 for Power Surge America. Packer Carroll and Daniel Lechleiter both missed the race, but are both looking very strong here. VJ Pushanda from India and Matthias Tau, a former, former winner of the Cariola Grand Prix, is in the consolation race this year. Lucas Grabert and Zach Webster in row four. Dima Van Hall, a rookie, and Craig Janser in car 81. Uh, Brandon Leroux in car 25 is going to be on the inside of Ike Durbin in the 7-11 car for Team Timothy. Richard Scott and Mariano Zavala in row 7, Independence Trophy car for Zavala. Morgan Hamburg, that's the third DeGarmo car, and Nick Azure in car 46. He wrecked his primary car there, he brought the back up out, he's going to race that. Garrett Hunt in the first Tutino, and Wyatt Castle in car 94 in row 9. Michaela Perry-Jones and Trek Tauger, both Independents in row 10. Row 11, Truman Ellison and Todd Stater. Row 12, uh, Austin Sanders making his debut, and Lonnie Rollins in a very interesting crowd-funded car, car 980. Uh, row 13, one of the three Manta Racing Developments cars that attempted the race, Randy Garland and Gabriel Massena, Derek Rigg in the Wildcat car, and Eric Henriksen in his own car. Ben Atkins, bit of a surprise that he missed the race, and the first of the Toliatis, Vitaly Karpenko, car 114. Mikhail Antonov rounds out the field. Luciano Savarol, of course, is withdrawn from the race because... Uh, uh, his teammate was swapped into this race, Yunus Anula and Eric ha and Il Ilias Halland are both wrecked in qualifying, and those cars were not in the shape to run, and we don't know why Evgeny Kuznetsov was withdrawn from the race. New Liberty Racing owner Tony Durbin was not available for comment, however he has been incredibly critical of the qualifying process for the Cariola Grand Prix all throughout the week. We understand that he is not even at the raceway at the present time. So watch that space in the coming days. Now there is Fitzwater, car 59 on the pole. He's chosen driver's right. The lights are out, and here we go. Bit of a slow start for Rip Tyler. Great start by Carroll. Lechleiter off the line very strongly in that red and blue car number 10. Couple cars in the back got really good jumps as well. Here is one of the more popular camera angles here every year. And there they go. Carroll in car 71 has always run very well here. And it's honestly a bit of a surprise as we see a couple of cars off a little bit, but nobody seriously uh, damaged there. No one's hit the wall. Carroll's always run very well here at Curryall, and it was honestly a surprise that he wasn't able to qualify. Came pretty close to doing so, but um, honestly, if you want to talk about someone who's a bit of a surprise to miss the race, probably have to be him uh, in uh, the 71 car. Pushanda in the 80 car. Got a great start there in the Roos Autosport car. Carroll's been having a bit of a disastrous season, desperate to turn things around, and I, th I think he's going to be—he's uh, going to have to look uh, today to do that. Hushanda makes a big dive on the exit. He gets into Carroll, and around he goes, and over and over goes the 71. Well, maybe uh, Packers' disaster of a year kind of continues. Very oh, and around goes Hamburg. Morgan Hamburg out of Connecticut, third to Garmo car, bit of contact there, I think, with Jones. Derek Rigg and Randy Garland made contact as well in the Dwyer, exit of the Dwyer S. On board, Austin Sanders. Uh, now that there is the first mess, see if we can... Ah, uh, looks like Garland got lost the rear end and got into the side of Rigg. Uh, the sponsor on Austin Sanders' car might be able to get him into a couple of other races, or even a couple other drivers into a few other races, so that paint job uh, on that 05 car, you might be seeing it again in the future. Now here they are after lap one. Fitzwater leads, Lechleiter is second. Third is Van Hall, Leroux is up to fourth. Uh, no penalty yet for car 80, but I would imagine one is going to be handed down. You can watch for where your favorite driver is running. There is Garland that just went by in that kind of dark yellow car. Here is Zachary Fitzwater. Now, um, the reactions throughout the paddock have been a bit mixed. There are some people that are a bit more understanding as to why Black Diamond Racing left Luciano Savarol, uh, put him in the race at Fitzwater's expense, especially since Fitzwater 
Uh, technically missed the race twice because it rem uh, he qualified for the race in Group 2, but his time was thrown out after the car failed tech inspection. Uh, but there are a lot of people that uh, think that Fitzwater need uh, that this race might be really good for Fitzwater because uh, uh, if he's driving angry, that could really help him. That car is he is way faster uh, than most everyone else right now. Looks like as Laroe off in the 25 car, the KLT the America ride. Another car is a little surprised to um, see not qualify for the main event, but that usually happens. There's always about three or four cars that you expect to solidly qualify for the race that end up just missing out and. Uh, Leroux unfortunately won this year, but here in the Constellation race, he's showing his worth. Craig Yancer, car 81. This is the first time that he started behind Zachary Webster, and I would, uh, this season. However, I would like to point out that this is the only race, uh, this season that has been set by, uh, actual qualified speed. So, this race was, uh, set by, um, by a draw, partially. So, starting off this race, a little Byzantine, I will admit. But here is Richard Scott in the 70 car. He is off that... Admittedly, he was, he's been having handling problems all weekend, and uh, it's been unfortunate that he uh, hasn't really quite gotten to handle this car. He is a pretty good... Oh, all over the place! You can tell right there as Perry Jones, the Fark star in the uh, 86 car, as a couple other cars. I think Ike Durbin in the 94 went off, but rejoined in the background. Uh, Perry Jones goes right on by uh, Richard Scott. Now here is uh, Antonov, Mikhail Antonov out of Russia in the one of the Toyotis and they are having uh, Karpinko's been off in the other one as well they've had a bit of an adventure of a weekend so far uh, they're what they're you the bodies in these cars are most oh and Antonov off and Karpinko off again in the same place and rig nowhere to go uh, that is probably emblematic of Toyotis weekend they have been by, by far and away the slowest cars in qualifying, but they're here in the Constellation race, and I would imagine they'll be promoters' options again for their home race in Russia. Those, the bodies in those cars are based off of uh, SARS from a year ago. I said the body, not the chassis. It's uh, under it. Anyways, Craig Johnson looks like he's gotten around his teammate, uh, Webster. It's 81 car, looking pretty strong in the opening laps. I think Craig Johnson has got a little bit of a point to prove today. Um, Especially since um, uh, uh, one of the Ortega cars, of course, qualified for the race. That being Gaspar de Souza, who is, uh, to be honest, Gaspar de Souza and qualifying heroics are two things that I normally associate with each other. Here is Matthias Taub, of course, former winner of the Coriola Grand Prix, and has found his way to the consolation race. He's had absolutely awful luck here ever since he won. Uh, ever since he won this race, his career has kind of been all over the place since. Is Tyler trying to set him up going into the north curve up here? Tyler in car 18 is uh, arguably one of the favorites to do well. Another driver that's been coming out of the Fark series and doing really well in uh, his uh, limited appearances in the uh, Power of Surge America car number 18. Uh, the affiliation between uh, Power of Surge America and Power of Surge Incorporated has been thrown into a little bit of question. And I think uh, LNX Racing is also is uh, kind of uh, making that uh, more obvious to everyone that didn't already notice. And uh, the LNX Racing controversy is something we'll have to get into late, uh, during the uh, race at uh, Coriola Grand Prix itself. As Yonser doing battle with, that is the 34 car, Lucas Grabert. New livery might be coming to that 34 car, so for those of you who are getting a little tired of seeing such a bland livery, for uh, Frank Lawrence's team, may not have to look at it so much longer. Of course, uh, this is now not the prettiest car on the track, but it's also not the worst car on the track. It's a decent color combination. There's Laroe, the 25 that Jans is trying to hunt down. That uh, kind of plum purple, very dark purple car number 81. Those green numbers make it stand out. Trying to hunt down um, uh, Laroe in the 25, who's been pretty quick here on uh, occasions throughout his career. Of course, not quick enough this year. Tao beginning to pull away in the uh, Turquoise 75. Yonser gets a great run out of Mallet come down this front straightaway. And we'll see if the Scarabs, Lenard's able to make a move stick. There he goes, Yonser sends it in. Very authoritative move, LaRoe trying to defend that. But uh, that was a good move by Yonser. Yonser almost throwing it off the track, but knows exactly where the limit is, it seems like. So Craig Yonser really on the move, and uh, He's uh, Brandon LaRoe sliding backwards a little bit more. There is Grabert, and that's Wyatt Castle that's caught up to this bunch. So that yellow card that I think made contact with Lake Durbin must not have been Castle. It must have been Todd Stater, actually, as that's the only other uh, 
It's the only other uh, yellow car in the race. Oh, uh, there, that Garland. Garland's a much different shade of yellow. Uh, anyways, here is a grabber trying to set up. No, Leroux defending pretty well here. Taub trying to make a move on front of this battle. We'll see if we can get a look at that now. Anyways, here's Dima Van Hall in car 191. This is the uh, Tony Long team. This team has shown up uh, a few different times with a few different drivers uh, over the past few years. And uh, look at Pushanda making a run around the outside. BJ Pushanda, very authoritative move around Van Hall. Pushanda, who has experience in TM Master Cup Series cars before, I think knew the, uh, the way around Van Hall there. Van Hall, this is his first run. But um, uh, Dima Van Hall just uh, trying to look to log some laps and do well for a, for a startup team. I think we'll be seeing more of the Tony Long team in the future. They definitely have um, enough uh, our recognition behind them to earn some more promoters options in the future. Here is Tyler in the 18 car making a run on Van Hall on the inside of the Dane. Uh, gives him enough room and Rip Tyler goes through. Experience really pay. Oh no, Tyler not able to clear him just yet. So experience in TM Master Cup Series cars or TM Europe cars, either or, has been uh, uh, has usually been very critical to doing well. Yeah, what a surprise, I know. But um, uh, Rip Tyler kind of showing that, um, even though of course not in Master Cup machinery exactly. He's been running in the FARC cars, which. Uh, those have been known, uh, the FARC series has produced quite a few very competent drivers at this level before. As Tau goes by Van Hall, is there, there might be something wrong with the 191 car. He's sliding backwards. That's uh, not exactly where he wants to be because Craig Yancer is on the move right behind him. Tau trying to, uh, trying to hang on. Van Hall is going to have the inside line coming down to Kalela's hairpin. Of course, named after the former uh, world champion. Coming into uh, the hairpin here. Let's see if Taub's able to hold on to hold him off. Or is Van Hall going to retake the place? I think he is. Yep, leading it, coming into the Dwyer S now. They're side by side, so not quite. Taub throws it in. This is great stuff here. As Taub, the Swede, is going to try to uh, clear the Dane as he is finally able to do so, I think. As Craig Yonser, you can see how much ground he's made up. Uh, from uh, the way that these two have been running each other. Very hard, very clean, but uh, Taub sliding up the track a bit in Mallet, and Yonser's going to have a run on both these guys in that 81 car. Uh, the uh, the Nutmegger getting a run on Taub as Taub has to cede the place to Van Hall, uh, and Yonser's going to be able to get by the 75. Great move so far from Yonser. Very patient. He's paying. Oh, and Antonov is off. Mikhail Antonov in the 119. Toyati ends his adventure. Let's see what happened to him. And oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! He went in there way too fast. I almost wonder if there were some, if there weren't some brake problems with that car, which is not a problem. Uh, that would be uh, unusual for the Toyatis. They had brake issues last year uh, as well, if you may remember. And in 2017 as well, it kept them from not qualifying as we see Tyler and Bushanda at it again. Tyler able to get by uh, and hold off the Indian and uh, there, uh, Pushanda sliding it off the track a bit. If, had Pushanda had qualified that 80 car there, uh, we're not sure if uh, he would have had to renumber that car or not because um, Xiaoyu Su uh, uh, was able to qualify as well. And of course, that's his regular number. And yes, you may have noticed we did. Oh, contact between Taub and Yancer as, as Taub may, sent that in a bit too hard. As I was saying earlier, we did get confirmation as to which uh, naming order to use for the. Um, uh, for Sue, in, on the, uh, you know, who of course did qualify for this race, for the Coriola Grand Prix that is. He's not in the field today. Um, the 191 car of Dima Van Hall looking behind, looking at Taub again as Janser held, uh, did a good job of holding off uh, a strong challenge there. As here is Zach Webster running well out in front. He's got an absolutely titanic lead at the moment. About time for pit stops. He's not coming in. Huh. He's got an un he's got an unreal lead at the moment. It's uh, he's got about a 13 second lead. It's I think over over Lecklider. He is over a second faster than the field every lap. Everyone else I think is coming to pit. It's about a half distance, a little shy of half distance. I hope Webster doesn't end up regretting this on lap 10 of 21 here. Oh, I think he might be. Oh no. Oh, he might have run it out of fuel. 
I almost wonder if Webster did either didn't hear the radio or there's radio problems on the 59, but he's definitely running out of fuel. He's pulling it along the side of the track to avoid uh, anyone running over him, which is very smart, but that's going to give the Tenere and Lechleiter and uh, Lechleiter Motorsports the lead of the race. I say Lechleiter Motorsports because, of course, the Tenere entry, uh, full-time entry, is essentially an amalgamation of multiple different teams. Uh, Daniel Lechleiter's team uh, has... Um, it, it, there's really hasn't been too many people with less luck in the field than Daniel Lechleiter, honestly. And um, he's finally getting to show uh, show his worth. And uh, we haven't I haven't really mentioned too much from today because he has pulled a pre, he pulled a pretty sizable gap on Tyler, uh, who is uh, in a much better machinery. We understand, or I, I do believe, than Lechleiter is. But uh, the the New Yorker really doing well, as you can see the running order on the left, as there is uh, Tau. Beginning to challenge Tyler in that 18 car. Craig Yonso right there, you may notice. Oh! Bushanda, not a, Bushanda tumbled through the field, but that's also partially due to a slow pit stop on the 80 car. As there is Tyler squeezing him out a little, Tau about a bit wide. Here we go, turns five, it's, whoa! Tyler very late on the brakes and absolutely stamping his authority over Tau. What a defense there from Rip Tyler. As here is Independence Trophy contender Mariano Zavala. You'll see him in action later in the year. He is off the track, the Venezuelan, letting Laro by. He had it now. You want to talk about someone who uh, had a great job, did a great job with the pits. Their crew really nailed it. It was, uh, of course, the 303 car, the Hanmore Ross team. Here is Laro, who's now taking sixth over. Uh, the Venezuelan trying to challenge. Oh, Laro has gone in a bit too, a bit too fast. And Zafala is going to go right back by. And uh, LaRoe is going to have to deal with uh, seeing a Super Mariano in front of him. Now here is Bouchard along with another driver that had a bit of a um, troubled pit stop, so to speak. That'd be Michaela Perry Jones out of Indiana chasing down another Hoosier, Ike Durbin, and in uh, the 7-Eleven car. And there, yeah, that car behind is Todd Stater. That was the car I think that Durbin had contact with earlier on as Pushanda continuing to fall back uh, through the field. Uh, see if, uh, if there's any problems with that car. Uh, but uh, he looks to be holding off, uh, looks to be holding uh, together okay for now. Here's Laro again as he tries to retake sixth from Zavala as Wyatt Castle in the uh, 94 that uh, Golden Red car is really starting to uh, uh, look rather big in his mirrors as Zavala goes wide. Contact with Laro and Castle, and around goes the 20. Excellent save from Laro. Only driver running full time in the series from North Carolina. Uh, of course, uh, Chuck Johnson is from South Carolina, and he is uh, running the entire schedule as well. So Brandon Laro carrying the flag for the South, um, sort of, but. Um, showing that there are still a lot of competent race car drivers coming out of the South these days. And even though there's not as many of them as there were in the uh, mid-2000s, perhaps. As Trek Tauger, the Austrian, trying to get past Webster in that red and yellow number 87. Tauger having quite a few fits doing so, and Webster needs a good run like this to, to kind of show uh, what he's worth, because he's had an awful start to the year, to be honest. He really needs to turn it around, and I think he's capable of doing it. Tauger trying to set him up. Webster slides a bit wide. Oh, no, they made contact, I think. I think Webster may have just lost the back end of the car because I don't think he would have moved over in the middle of a brake zone, especially that one on Trek Tauger like that. A big accident. Both of them okay, but that's not the kind of move you want to make over there. Oh, and we got problems for Lucas Grabber. As there goes Lonnie Rollins by in the 980 car. Uh, it's a tough, tough break for the Germans, so that's Grabber out of it. Daniel Lechleiter in the mean. Whoa! He's uh, the New Yorker get, uh, throwing it off a bit, but Lechleiter, his lead is being eroded very slightly, uh, ever, ever so slightly every lap by uh, Rip, Tyler, and the pursuing field. He's built out a pretty big lead in the first stint, though, and he's trying to make the most of it. This team also absolutely nailed it on the uh, uh, in the pits. So that's really helping him out, and Lechleiter definitely showing what he's capable of today. Uh, Matthias Taub in car number 75 trying to run down Tyler, but I think he's losing Tyler because Janser looks like he's going to be all over him like bad smell, and Dima Van Hall as well in the 191 car. 
Going a bit further back, here's one car absolutely making a move. It's Gabriel Massena, the uh, Brazilian driver. A lot of people surprised that he didn't land the 50 car. That's actually a few places behind him, uh, just as he goes by LaRoe. But uh, Gabriel Massena, very competent driver. He's been running on and off in uh, various different uh, categories. He's run the Independence Trophy several times in the past. He's usually performed very well, but never won the whole thing. He's uh, running up and not, he's going to be running up, and I do believe eighth right now. And he's having a very strong day. Hope to see more of him in the future. Here is uh, Lechleiter. Now he's got, got his mirrors all filled with that 18 car. He's got. And he's got six laps to hold off a much faster Tyler. Let's see how long he's able to do it. Because I think there's going to be some people that doubt whether or not this Tenere is going to be able to do so. Tyler really making up most of that advantage just on these, on these straightaways here. As uh, here we go down into turn five. Oh, Lechleiter sends it in very deep. Throwing against Tyler a bit out of shape. And that was, that was a very authoritative defense there. From the uh, from Daniel Lechleiter, really, really proving uh, that what he can do here today. Almost faking out Tyler there uh, uh, in that 18, and he's now got Taubra uh, coming up as well. So Lechleiter is going to have to do a lot of mirror driving, which he's capable of. But we'll have to see how much he's able to do just before the car gives out. See if he can actually make it to the end of the race like this. Stranger things have happened. Um, just remember the Lynx Racing car is doing that, uh, running 1-2 for almost the entirety of the Cariola Grand Prix one year, um, which Davina Henton won, which also, uh, in incident incidentally, is the last win to date as Tyler begins to uh, make a move. Now, I think here's where Tyler's going to absolutely eat up Lechleiter. They both got great exits off Mallet, uh, but the 18 came off a lot faster, and you can see he's, uh, he's going to have a... Oh, Lechleiter way, way deep! That's going to be a bit too much. I think he is—he has gone way, a bit too wide there. I think any further—I think any wider, that car would have been in the wall. And that would have really spoiled what's been a pretty good day so far for that number 10 team. It did occur to me also that uh, this—this uh, this is a 21-lap race, and most of the field stopped on lap 10. If you do a bit of math there, you'll realize that the mathematics might be a bit unfavorable for them going the rest of the way without stopping, unless you do quite a bit of fuel saving. And I wonder. If that's what Lechleiter has been doing this whole time. Uh, that would certainly explain why the 18 car was able to reel him in as a big slide from both Lechleiter and Taub. Uh, that would explain why the 18 was able to reel him in so quickly. And um, would also explain Lechleiter's fairly consistent pace as well. Taub now trying to uh, challenge Lechleiter. Now I wonder whether or not the 18's just given up on uh, fuel saving at all or if he's not aware of that or thinks he can make it to the end. We'll see. Taub trying to hold off Van Hall in the 191 car. Tony Long team doing a very good job so far with uh, the debutante Dane in uh, that white, black, and orange car. Through the Dwyer S again. Lechleiter in car 10. Big slide! Oh my goodness! He is really hanging on to that to that Tenere as best he can, I think. Almost wonder if he's uh, fuel saving at all, but we'll have to see. Um, got a, he's got a few laps to go. Still got a few laps to make the decision whether or not to pit or not. Taub coming on the inside in the 75. Is Lechleiter, he's, well, I think Lechleiter may, may have to give this place up because Taub's already got him on the inside well before the exit of Mallet. And you don't really want to be fighting side by side in the exit of uh, Mallet because that wall shows up fairly quickly. Uh, and you notice these three have broken well away from the rest of the field behind them. Van Hall trying to get around Lechleiter now. Lechleiter defends. Uh, Van Hall's crossover move from the 191 on the inside of Lechleiter. Is he going to be able to get him this time? Looks like he might, uh, but that's going to be on the outside of Cyril Park. He's not able to do it. Trying again now towards the uh, Kalela hairpin on the uh, northern, uh, northern part of the track here. And Lechleiter wide in the 10. There, tires must have gone off on that, I believe. But I don't think he'd be pitting for tires. It would also be that he's just mirror driving a bit too much and just missed his braking point as he has no choice but to give up third to Van Hall there. Still a great drive from Lechleiter so far. Gabriel Massena in this 51 car has really made up a lot of ground. I mentioned it before, but he's now up to seventh, and he is uh, the second quickest car on the track at the moment. So this 51 car really making a strong impression today. Lechleiter in the 10 is on the apron. He's coming in. 
They have abandoned fuel saving with this 10 car, and he's going to bring it in. Oh, that could be a bit. This could be a big gamble, and it could all go pants, but it could also uh, be a great roll. Ah, Masena in as well. They must fifth. I think that might have been what the um, 51 team looked like. They were ready long in advance. There is the 46 of Azure. I haven't seen much of him. He's been back in 19th. There's uh, uh, Henriksen and uh, Stater at the back as well. Zachary Fitzwater uh, is still running, as uh, the you may have noticed. He is, but he's just running well down the order. Uh, now, if there's one car that won't have to deal with um, running out of fuel in the last lap, it's probably going to be him. Uh, but uh, wouldn't that be something if he's able to? If, uh, but of course, he's well, w way, way back. Blacklighter now has got Austin Sanders right behind him in that uh, sort of purple 05 car. I mentioned that that sponsor might be able to get him into a couple other rate promoters options, or at least, if not Sanders, then another driver. Uh, but Blacklighter tumbled well down the order, and he's uh, just going to have to run his own pace and hope that more that some people um, uh, play the strategy card the wrong way. I think Rip Tyler noticed what's going on here. The 18 is in. Power Surge America ready to go to work here. This is going to put Matthias Taub as the race leader and the uh, one look over at the Showbird camp. Uh, they're looking quite comfortable over there. They're not looking at getting up off their chairs. I think they are intending on going all the way. White flag for Taub. Former winner of the Cariola Grand Prix, trying to all, trying to be the first driver to win the Cariola Grand Prix and the Constellation race, which has never been done before. Uh, which is not really a surprise, but um, um, it's also, uh, you know, you don't, not many former winners of this race end up failing to qualify again. As Taub, as, oh no, I think he's running out of, is he running out of fuel? I think he must have. I think he has. Taub beginning to slow down a bit. In that 75 car, where is Dima Van Hall? Because Van Hall hasn't pitted either in the 191 car. There's Van Hall. There he is. Is he going to be able to catch Taub? No. I think he's running out also. Last lap, we've got two cars running it out of fuel. Here comes Craig Yonser. Is he, oh, Yonser might be coming in a bit too hot. He hit the grass. Craig Yonser tried to go around Van Hall on the outside, but he hit the he hit the grass and uh, while he was on the brakes and ran into the back of him. There's Zavala. Zavala's running out of fuel as well. I think Yonser may have a bit more fuel left in it, though. Here's Zavala. No, he's out of it, too, in the 303. Zavala through the dice. Here comes Tyler. Here comes Tyler in the 18 car. Where is Yonser? Has Yonser run it out of fuel or not? I don't see him anywhere. I yes, I think he's up here. Up ahead. Yes, Yonser's run it out. Rip Tyler goes by him on the grass. All four wheels off the track for Rip Tyler. Just got a couple of corners to go and nobody around him. Rip Tyler has uh, been a star in the lower tiers. He's been a star in the FARC div uh, division before. He's come up to the Master Cup Series to live for limited times, but now he's going to get his first win in a non-championship race. Rip Tyler takes the consolation race in thrilling fashion with most of the field running out of fuel on the last lap. And I'm pretty sure you may have noticed that the top eight drivers all pitted uh, between laps 18 and 19 after Lechleiter and Masena appeared to kick things off. Ninth place, Matthias Taub uh, is scored there because, well, that's where he was running on the last lap that he completed, and that can be said with everyone else here in the top 20. No points awarded for this event, obviously, but uh, there is prize money on hand, so those that, uh, that uh, uh, pitted for fuel are going to be seeing a much better payday than they were uh, expecting, especially since... Guys like Rollins, Castle, and Azure were running well down the order and weren't really in contention at all. The next time the series will be in action will be for the Cariola Grand Prix proper. 72 laps through this same bit of racetrack, and it'll be a grueling endurance race that usually tests the limits of driver and machine. Hey there friends, here's some content made by friends of the show, and I highly recommend you check out these videos. However, if you feel so inclined, I put a link in the description of this video to some bail funds for the protests lately. And remember, Black Lives Matter. Always.